Today's video, we're going to install Tor on our Windows 10 virtual machine. Uh, I'll do another video showing you how to install Tor on the Ubuntu machine, but it's actually very similar. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to bring up our Chrome browser and we're just going to Google Tor so that we know we're getting the actual right project. Um, as you can imagine, a tool like Tor, which is used to exploit uh, the dark web, uh, there's a lot of fake Tor projects out there. So make sure you're using a reputable search engine in order to actually locate the Tor download. Uh, now the URL for the Tor browser is actually torproject.org. Um, you can also go right there directly. So now it's not that hard uh, to do the install. We're just going to click the download button and we're right now on a Windows machine. So you're going to see English uh, Windows uh, version 7 of the Tor browser uh, and it says 32-64-bit uh, so we're going to go ahead and download that. Now that will actually install and download the correct version uh, so it's going to take a second to download and then it's gonna, we're going to go ahead and install it. So at the end of the install it's going to ask you if you want to run it and add it to your desktop so we're going to go ahead and click finish and it's going to go ahead and automatically start the Tor browser. So the first thing you get when you run the Tor browser, it's going to ask you two questions. Are you actually going to try to connect to the Tor network, or are you going to set your computer up to use the Tor network as the proxy? Uh, now, for regular um, kind of burner box type scenarios, you're almost always going to use this first option, this, uh, which just has a connect button. If you want to do something a little bit different and you want to run a different program that routes through the Tor network, you'll have to set that up as a proxy. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and click connect. And now it is establishing a connection to the Tor proxy servers. Now the Tor network is made up of a lot of different machines that's going to route traffic around. And it's going to be worldwide, so traffic is going to be routed all around the world. Uh, and it's going to go through about three different hops before it actually gets to the final destination, before it does something. Now in this video, we're just going to use the Tor browser in order to, to browse the regular surface web, uh, stuff that you could normally do today, uh, but we're essentially going to do it completely anonymously. Um, in another video, I'll talk about using more dark web sites as part of the Onion router itself, which are going to be sites that have a .onion extension. Uh, but today, we're just going to cover some of the, the general use of using the Tor browser as an anonymizing browser. The first thing you'll probably notice when you launch the Tor browser is it looks very similar to another browser, uh, Firefox. And the reason is, is they both have the same core engine, Mozilla. Uh, so the Tor browser will actually operate and function almost identical to your Firefox, uh, but it's going to use a lot more anonymity and give you access to the Tor network. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go to a regular website and we're going to go to brightplanet.com. So www.brightplanet.com. Now the first thing you'll notice is that it's probably a lot slower than if you were to do the same thing in Chrome or Firefox. And the reason it's so much slower is that it's actually routing the traffic through multiple servers before eventually exiting the Tor network onto the public web, uh, creating this anonymity. So rather than going right straight on the fastest path from our virtual machine to brightplanet.com, it's actually going to route that traffic around. Uh, and we're going to see where it routed that traffic here in just a minute. So what you'll notice is there's a warning on the screen here about uh, HTML5 cam canvas image data. And what this is warning us is saying that this website, brightplanet.com, has some tracking software on it uh, that may actually be used to track your, your movement and, and where you're coming from and what browser that you're using. Uh, now, in a normal circumstance, you're probably not going to care about that, uh, and especially since this is a regular open source website, uh, we really don't care about it. Uh, but you're going to get these types of prompts when you're actually using the Tor browser. So we're just going to go ahead and close it. So as you can see, this web page looks pretty much identical as it would if you went straight there with Firefox or Chrome. Uh, the big difference is, is we actually got this web page by routing the traffic through the Tor network and came in completely anonymous. So if we were to look at the brightplanet.com web log, uh, we would not see an IP address coming from my machine or my virtual machine uh, because of that routing. So, but as you can see, the web page itself looks exactly the same and all the functionality is going to be identical. So the first thing we're going to look at is if you click this little onion icon here on the toolbar, uh, what you'll notice is, is that it actually shows you what the path is to this website. And this is true for any web page that you go to while using the Tor browser. So it starts here, that's this browser, so this machine, and then it went to a server in France, and then Sweden, and then Canada before it actually went to the public web and came over to the brightplanet.com server. So as you can see, it made three separate hops before it actually got to the Brightplanet website. 
Because the Tor browser is routing through multiple servers, usually in different countries, uh, the IP address that the server sees is actually a different IP address than what our VM is. And to show this, we can actually bring up another instance, and we can go to a search engine like Google, and you'll see that it, it's going to route that traffic around the Tor network, and then it's eventually going to leave, and it's going to be in the country that it looks like it's coming from. So now in this case, it looks like it's maybe coming from the U.S., and so you'll see this Tor instance went from uh, this machine to France to Germany to the U.S. and then to Google. So Google thinks we're somewhere in the U.S. at this particular IP address. In fact, if we type in, what's my IP? it'll actually show us what that IP address is. Now you'll see we get this error, and the reason we get this error is because a lot of traffic is being routed through this server, and so Google thinks we're a robot and we're trying to do something with their data. Uh, this is a common problem when using proxy servers and uh, things like the Tor network. Uh, so we can attempt to try to get around this by confirming the reCAPTCHA and then issuing it again. Uh, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. And it's going to do something like this, uh, where it's going to ask you to identify something that only a human should be able to do uh, before it allows us to proceed. All right, so now that I've completed the reCAPTCHA, uh, you can see it's actually displaying our IP address as that one that it's indicating here as well. So this is uh, routing through France, Germany, United States, and then to Google. And so Google thinks it's this server right here uh, is us. So a couple more things to note. Uh, if you want to create an entirely new identity and essentially drop all of the information from within your Tor browser, you can select New Identity. And this will actually restart the browser and recreate all of the sessions. Uh, so if you're doing some exploitation and you don't want to keep any of the cookie or uh, persistent information, uh, that's one way to recycle it. You'll also notice it has this Forbid Scripts uh, plugin already installed. Uh, by default, the Tor browser is going to take some precautions on your behalf in order to try to avoid any uh, detection or monitoring of your sessions. Uh, now, another thing you'll notice if you do something like maximize your browser, it'll pop up this message here indicating that if you make your screen size um, the full screen, you'll actually be revealing a little bit of information about you or your machine. Uh, so it'll give you a little bit of a warning on that. Again, we're using this right now as a proxy, so it's not to the surface web, so it's not really going to be a big deal. Uh, but if you are doing more specific exploitation, uh, you probably don't want to run it maximize. You want to kind of keep it as part of a window. So that concludes our installation of the Tor browser on the Windows 10 uh, virtual machine. Uh, the next video will install it on the Ubuntu in, uh, virtual machine that we set up uh, and then after that we'll go ahead and test it out using some actual dark web websites. If you like this video be sure to head over to our Deep Web University where you'll find more videos, white papers, and articles about open source web harvesting for your business. I would also invite you to join our monthly newsletter where we send out exclusive insights and partner updates. If you're ready to continue learning I've got a couple videos already queued up for you. 